Welcome to Prestom TV. I'm so excited about this episode because we're going to be talking about one of the major themes of this movement of Prestom. It's the Nazarite vow. Uh, if you followed Prestom any length of time, you will notice that a lot of things we do always tend to come back to this whole idea of the Nazarite vow. We have a school of prayer called the Nazarite School of Prayer. Uh, we've, we've just developed an app called the Nazarite Challenge. So it's a real significant part of our DNA and our calling. So in this episode, I'm with my friend Rob, Rob Sharp, and we're going to be talking about what it means to be a Nazarite, the whole idea, because we realize for many people, it's kind of like a strange concept. They maybe heard the word a few times, but don't really understand what it's really about. So uh, Rob, you know, we've been talking about this whole thing about being a Nazarite for many years now. Um, what kind of like the main things that come to your mind when you think about what it means to be a Nazarite? Yeah, that's great. Well, a Nazarite really is a type of fast. All the way through the Bible, there's different fasts for different purposes. Some of them are like fast for repentance. Whereas the Nazarite vow is a fast that focuses on separating yourself, which is actually what the word Nazarite means. It means separated or consecrated one. Mm. And it's a process of separating yourself in order to be more spiritually fruitful for God, mm -hmm. closer to God. Because out of that intimacy with God, he's able to bear fruit in your life. Mm -hmm. Through the Bible, there's these people called archetypes of Nazarites that are Nazarites for their whole life, like John the Baptist, Samuel, Samson are obviously one. And what's fascinating about these people is that every single one of them was born to a woman with a barren womb because the spirit of the Nazarite is God's solution to barrenness. And I, I think that's a really important concept in our context today, yeah. Yeah. because we look at society, we look at even the state of the church, yeah. And we want to see God move. And in many ways, we can identify with barrenness, mm -hmm. a lack of the explosion of the power of God, the presence of God in our schools, our universities, you know, name it, our spheres of influence in society. So we see the barrenness and we want to see life in that space. So God calls certain people to separate themselves to him. And I think as an important point, we we'll need to emphasize the concept of separating ourselves is not just about, I am not doing all these things. Even though that's a part of it, the major part of separating is the fact that we are creating space to give ourselves to God in a deeper way. Yeah. So we're separating from yeah. to be separated to. So we're, we're, we're connecting ourselves to God in a, in a very focused way. I think it's so important that we understand that being Nazarite or taking a Nazarite vow is about separating ourselves to God, to abide in God to create more room for God in our lives so we can be filled with more of God and actually have a greater impact on society. And I love the idea that, uh, well, I love the concept of being a Nazareth, especially as I see it played out in certain characters in scripture. And we're gonna look in more detail in some of these people. However, I see this relationship between people who set themselves apart to God and influence and significant impact in the voice that God gives them to shape history. So you look at John the Baptist, for example, he was a Nazarite and the lifestyle he lived was so set apart to God. He had, he created room for God. He fasted, he prayed, he lived in the, in the wilderness, you know, and out of that place, God gave him a voice that impacted the nation. Yeah. Because we want to see our nation change, because we understand the barrenness of the land we're in, we understand right now, God is wanting to raise up Nazarites like John, people who will set themselves apart to God, so that through us, we can, through us, God can change a nation. And I think that's really important because my personal experience of taking these Nazarite vows, and I've taken them a few times, I know you have a few times, we've often done them together, which is a really good thing to do, to do it together with somebody. I yeah. think having a like Nazarite partner is yeah. doubles the power almost. And also sometimes it can be really hard. And so it kind of, that accountability helps you push through. You'll be like, oh, I don't want to tell James I ate chocolate or something. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that I found in my life, I feel sharper. I feel more sensitive to what God's doing. Mm. I start to see more of the fruits of the Spirit mm. in my life. But I think what I've really learned, especially being around James and Prestorm, is actually 
the lifestyle that you lead, it's the separated lifestyle that you lead, means that you're not just making noise when you pray or yeah. preach, you're actually a voice yes. and you're speaking light yes. into the kingdom of darkness. Yes, yes. To, to be a voice in the heavens, we need to be consecrated on the earth. That is really a concept that summarizes what it means to be a Nazarite, that we will be voices in the heavens that shifts the powers of darkness and prepares the way for what God wants to do in our lives and in the, na in the nations. So I wanna encourage you to join us on this journey. Now, in the next few episodes, we're gonna be going deeper and sharing some more about what it means to be a Nazarite, give you some, uh, some more examples and what it looks like practically. So stay tuned. 